After a win on Wednesday, the Lakers have taken a 3-1 lead in the NBA Finals. Just one win away from a championship with a lead so large in the series that only one team in NBA history has come back from such a deficit. And the leader of that comeback is now on the other side of things. Unless the Miami Heat pull off a miracle, LeBron James is destined to win his fourth NBA championship. But not every ring is built the same. So how will this championship change the trajectory of LeBron's legacy? Or maybe an even better question, does this change anything at all? For the first time in a decade, the Los Angeles Lakers have made their way back to glory. Of course, the job's not finished yet, but it pretty much is. Job's not finished. Job finished? No, I don't think so. Are you sure about that? The Lakers are one win away from their 17th championship, which will tie the Boston Celtics for the most in league history. In fact, this season makes it the Lakers 33rd finals appearance in franchise history, which means the Lakers have better odds of making it to the finals than the Clippers have of winning a regular season game. I wish I was kidding. Possibly the most shocking and insulting stats I have ever seen in my life. So this particular championship isn't all that special in the grand scheme of things, except it features a player that is building one of the most complete, extensive, and record-breaking resumes the game has ever seen. When it comes to records in the finals, LeBron is now first in wins, second in points, second in assists, second in steals, fourth in rebounds, and first in triple doubles. But we are already familiar with those numbers. And unfortunately, filling the stat sheet does not always result in success, which leads us to the other record, the dreaded three and six finals record. It's by far the largest black mark on LeBron's career. It's a number that continues to haunt him on his quest to becoming one of the greatest to ever do it. In fact, LeBron James and Wilt Chamberlain are the only two players to reach top 10 status while maintaining a losing record in the finals. But how does that old saying go? Quality over quantity. Well, of every player to ever play the game, LeBron is tied for the second most finals MVPs. Tim Duncan has five rings, but was outplayed by Tony Parker and Kawhi Leonard in two finals. Magic Johnson has five rings, but missed out on two finals MVPs to Kareem and James Worthy. Kobe has five rings, but only two finals MVPs. And Kareem has six rings, but only two finals MVPs. So if the goal is to play big when it matters most, sure, winning the finals is extremely important. But being the best player on your way to a championship is just as paramount. This is why Robert Ori, a man with more championships than Michael Jordan, is not considered better than MJ. Because we are all aware of the context. In which case, MJ and LeBron are the only players to be the best player on each of their championship winning teams more than twice. And with the way LeBron's currently playing, he may possibly win his fourth finals MVP. Now, the key word here is possibly. Because right now, the LeBron James Anthony Davis combo is looking like one of the most deadly and equally productive duos to ever do it. But even in his 10th finals appearance, LeBron is just as dominant as ever putting up numbers that even Anthony Davis can't quite keep up with. In fact, two narratives that are circulating at the moment are that Anthony Davis is playing outstanding defense in comparison to LeBron, and that Anthony Davis is carrying the Lakers down the stretch. Both of these narratives being painfully incorrect. LeBron not only has a higher defensive rating than Anthony Davis in the finals, LeBron has scored three times as many points in the fourth quarter as Anthony Davis so far in the series. But the standard he has set for himself has become so incredibly high that if he wants to call himself the GOAT, these are the criticisms he will be getting until he silences every one of them. Because let's be honest, the constant, never-ending complaining to the refs is completely out of control. I actually saw a play where LeBron drew contact, got the foul call, and still complained because the foul wasn't called soon enough. Like, you got what you wanted. What more do you want from the guy? And then there was this play where LeBron complained for a foul while he was in the middle of a layup. Like, dog. The play isn't even over yet. 
Of course, he's not the only player to ever complain to a ref, but it's more than just some whining here and there. Yelling at the refs has become a staple of LeBron's game, an actual attribute he's apparently trying to boost or something. And then there was this little incident that many viewers picked up on after their loss in Game 3 against the Heat. LeBron walking off the court like a sore loser. Except, if this is being a sore loser, then does that make Larry Bird a sore loser for walking off the court during a free throw while getting eliminated in the conference finals? Or, let me guess, is that just his competitive nature showing? And then there's the argument that I've never quite understood about this road to a championship being an easy one. First, it was LeBron couldn't compete in the West, and then it was Dame time, and then Small Ball was supposed to pick apart the Lakers' big slow defense, and then it was watch out for this young gritty Nuggets team, and now here we are with the Lakers just one win away from a championship, and apparently their opponent isn't great, and Anthony Davis is carrying the Lakers. How exactly is a team that took down the squad with the best record in the NBA, the league MVP, and defensive player of the year, took down a Celtics team with one of the best duos in the NBA and a star in Jason Tatum, and only lost three games coming into the finals, how are they not a good team? Sure, they don't have a superstar, but you don't just accidentally stumble your way into the finals. They have earned their shot at a championship. And to say they aren't a worthy opponent is insulting to all the work they've put in up to this point. According to this kind of logic, I guess the Bucks and the Clippers and the Nuggets and the Celtics and the Raptors and every other team in the NBA just wasn't trying. But obviously they were, and this take is ridiculous. If this Miami Heat team is not a great finals team, then what do you call the 2015 Cavaliers with LeBron and literally a bunch of bench players? Or what about the 2001 76ers with Allen Iverson basically playing 5 on 1 against the Lakers? Or the 2007 Cavaliers with LeBron James basically playing 5 on 1 against the Spurs? My point is that not every team that makes it to the finals is going to be an all time great super team. The finals over the last decade has skewed our perspective of what a great team looks like. And for the first time in a long time, LeBron and company are not facing off against a team full of Hall of Famers. Of all the all-time great players who spent the last 10 months fighting for this moment, only two teams actually earned it. So here we are, on an inevitable course to a Lakers championship and LeBron's fourth ring and possibly fourth finals MVP. So what does this change? Well, for fans who have been paying attention for the last 17 years, not much. And for the others, well, again, this championship won't change much. You either accept his greatness or you don't. At this point in his career, the numbers and accolades are inevitably going to pile up. Another championship or two is not going to change the fact that LeBron is arguably the best to ever do it. Another ring doesn't increase or diminish LeBron's seemingly ageless dominance. This was all a part of the plan. Three and six was always just a number, not a defining value of LeBron's ability or legacy. And that three, potentially changing to a four, is only validation to what some realized years ago. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.